Hi, this is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing. We're inside the solar shed and you're looking at the east wall right here. And it's uh, got a bunch of junk and clutter in it already. It didn't take long. But the plan was always to use this uh, building for a little bit more than just to house our solar components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a, a uh, table that's going to run wall to wall and stick out about 18 inches from the wall. And it's going to be the, ho the temporary home of our coffee grinder and our espresso machine, which is still in storage, but we desperately want to get that out of storage, as well as some other th items. So I'm going to be, I took some measurements here, and I'm building a pretty simple, uh, simple design. It's going to be very similar to a lot of the other things I've done, like the, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the shelving for the batteries for the solar unit. There it is, right there. So it's worked, by the way, the solar thing, it's just working fantastic. Uh, right now, our unit is bringing in, I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go, 1,412 watts. It's putting out 1,412 watts. We're at 48.8 volts, and we're currently running the air conditioner, refrigerator, and a few other things. It's drawing about 2,000 watts. So it's staying just about even during the day uh, cause, because the air conditioner will cycle on and off, but it's working out great. By the way, Yvonne is busy with her macrame. This stuff is uh, just turning out awesome. She's getting really good at it, and she's setting up an Etsy store, so look for that there. And if we ever hit 1,000 subscribers, then we will have that giveaway as we promised. Anyways, so... Table measurements have been taken. I've started building it, and I'll show you what I got done. So this is the frame that I've built. It's made out of 2x4 uh, rough sawn lumber. And a lot of people have been asking why I like rough sawn lumber. And the reason, there's a couple reasons. One of which is it's an actual 2 inches by 4 inches. And the other is that the edges, when you look at it, they're nice and square. They have not been rounded over like you see on typical dimensional lumber. So, uh, you know, I've sanded it down. I used a, uh, a random orbital sander. One day I'll be able to get a uh, belt sander. A belt sander and a planer would be awesome if you're into making furniture. But I'm, you know, just starting out with this. So I'm sure one day I'll be lucky enough to get those items. Anyways, so I sanded it down, which I usually don't do. I usually just go straight to the Shoshugi Bon, and the Shoshugi Bon actually does smooth out the texture very much. You can see the textures here, and I really worked at it with the sander, but this is from the first plane uh, at the lumber mill, and you know, even going, it's smooth, but the marks are still in there. So uh, I've decided, I was going to stain it, and I've decided, you know what, even after all the work of sanding it down, I'm going to shoshugi bonnet. it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so the burning is done. And I just wanted to say one thing about shoshugi bon. It's typically used for exterior uh, wood preservation, waterproofing, as well as uh, making it bug-proof. This table is going to be inside. And uh, I decided to use the Shoshugi Bon anyway because I just like the look of it. It's a pure aesthetic uh, decision. I also made a decision not to go as dark with the burn as I usually do. Typically, I will go down to where it's black and gets what's called alligator or crocodile, where it burns and it really starts to pick up a texture of crocodile skin or alligator skin. And I decided on this one to go a little lighter maybe maintain a little bit more contrast with the grain, and we'll see how it turns out. So the next step is going to be just rubbing it down with a Scotch-Brite pad. It's a messy business, but uh, it takes all the soot off of it, and I will then be hitting it with a satin polyurethane. Okay, I just finished right wiping it down with a uh, Scotch-Brite cloth and getting most of the soot loose and then off and then go back. You always have to go back and wipe it down a few times with a towel. You can see how much soot is on there. And because of this soot, if you don't seal it somehow, uh, you're going to constantly get dirty every time you touch it or rub up against it. So traditionally you would use something like a linseed oil and uh, that would then dry, absorb dry, give it some additional protection against bugs and uh, against deterioration. 
I'm going to use um, some polyurethane, clear satin, polyurethane oil-based, and and I'm doing it because I've got it handy. Got linseed oil too, but for some reason, because this is going to be inside and going to be a little bit more furniture-like, I want to uh, give it a little bit finer of a sealant. And uh, the one thing, a couple more things I wanted to tell you about this rough sawn lumber. There's two more things I got to tell you about it. First of all, I like using it because it's cheap. I got 14 foot boards, two by fours, for a dollar fifty each. That's pretty cheap. The downside is you got to put up with things like edges that are not square. I like those. Those to me add character. I got no problem with that. But the other thing you got to really look out for is a lot of twisting. You can see this 2x4, and I tried using a bar clamp to pull that down tight to screw it in, and it just wouldn't work. So there is some twisting, bowing, cupping to this wood, and uh, you got to just kind of pick and choose. When I bought this stuff, I went through and cherry picked the absolute nicest I could get, and it's just unavoidable. There's going to be some, uh, some bad bad boards in the bunch but you do the best you can with it so i'm going to finish wiping this down and give it a coat of polyurethane so i have the first coat of uh, polyurethane on and this is really nothing more than a coat to seal the grain and prep it for a second coat it came out pretty nice it's still kind of shiny because it's wet it's going to dry to a satin finish but uh gives it the look of an old walnut, and I really like it. It's the combination of polyurethane, oil-based polyurethane, which has a habit of doing what's called ambering, which means turning yellow or yellowish over time. It's gonna be the combination of ambering and the lighter shoshugi bond. I know the lighting isn't the best. We are fortunate here on our property to have a lot of trees, which gives us the ability to work in shade when it's 95 degrees outside. And that makes all the difference. It's really, it really makes it pleasant to be outside. So the bad, the downside of it is that when I'm making videos, the lighting isn't always the best. Anyways, this is the first coat of polyurethane. I'm gonna let this dry overnight. I will hit it with uh, some light sandpaper, do a second coat, hit it with a probably a triple or a quadruple zero uh, steel wool and then put a final coat on it. And then what happens is I'll take it into the solar shed and I will assemble the rest of the uh, surfaces inside the shed. Otherwise, it's just going to be way too heavy to deal with. Anyways, so the next job in any wall painting, the next job is going to be cleanup. And I'm going to walk right in without cutting the video because there's something I want to share with you. The one thing I learned a long time ago is, if you're gonna buy paintbrushes, man, buy a good one and buy the one that's proper for the job. Now this polyurethane, which I'm using here, which is a spar, a spar urethane oil-based, calls for a china, or a, pardon me, a bristle brush. And when you go to a place like Home Depot or Lowe's, bristle, bristle brushes, say that three times fast, are hard to find. This is a Worcester Pro white bristle brush. Let me get it focused. There you go. And it ran me, and it's a two and a half inch, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, two and a half inch angled brush, or a, what some people call a sash brush. And it probably costs 18 bucks, which sounds like a lot of money, but I'm telling you, nothing gives a better finish than a good paintbrush. And nothing will take an expensive paint and make it look horrible than a cheap paintbrush. But the next step is you got to take care of these paintbrushes. So you got to clean them out thoroughly with the proper with the proper cleaning and I'm going to use an odorless mineral spirits. And one trick that I learned a long time ago and where is it is to have a tool like this. Pick that up at one of the big box stores, Sherwin-Williams stores, Benjamin Moore stores, all paint stores have these, and it is a paintbrush cleaner. And what you do is you comb it through the bristles 
while you're cleaning it, it gets the cleaning material or the cleaning solution, be it water, soap and water, or a mineral spirits, deep into the bristle, and it separates the bristle at the same time. And when you're done, give it a final combing, and the best way to maintain the shape of the brush is to keep it right in its original package. So uh, this little thing ran maybe three bucks, four bucks. But if you use this and clean your br brushes properly, a good brush like this should last you many, many years. I know many pro painters who have brushes that are 10 years old and they're still using them. And it's because they take care of them and they treat them with respect. Anyways, I'm going to get this cleaned up and this video will continue tomorrow. I guess I should have uh, measured a little more carefully before I began building. You can see the issue. So, got a couple options. I can either cut that back brace out completely or I can notch it because when you look at it, if I notch it down about two inches like this around the box, I should be able to push it at least or at least expose the receptacle. So I'm gonna do that's what I'm gonna give a shot first before I make any more radical modifications. Okay, first part of the problem was an easy fix. I just lowered the receptacle about four or five in now more than that, about eight inches so that it's below the uh, brace. The only other problem I'm having is this piece of liquid tight here is being is blocking the two by four from going back up against the wall. So I'm just going to kind of dado out that section right there. I'm going to cut halfway through with the circular saw and then use a chisel, clean it up so that it should slip at least closer to the wall. These walls are not perfectly straight, so whether it's going to get perfectly flush to the wall or not, that remains to be seen, but this will be the best fix I can get. So let me get that done. So you can see I set the circular saw blade depth to go about three quarters of the way through and then just made repeated cuts along the uh, channel here to make it easier to get it clean out with a chisel. And of course, as you can see, I nicked that edge there so it's not going to be perfectly clean, but it's going to be up against the wall. So let me get this cleaned out and I'll show you what it looks like. As you can see, I was a little generous with my cut. I probably could have gone a half an inch deep into that uh, cross member, but if I had done that, it wouldn't have been enough and I would have had to redo it. It's just the way it is. It's Murphy's Law. But I'd rather have it uh, too big than too small. And quite frankly, once these uh, once these boards are in, it's going to be dark down there. No one's going to see it. And no one will know except you, me, and the rest of YouTube. So now I'm going to have, now that I have the frame in place, I can start working on the, uh, on the, on the surfaces. And what I'm going to do is use a combination of 2x6s and 2x8s, and I'm going to run them this way. And the idea is, or, my, or at least the plan is, to take it from the wall, and I'm going to let it run out pretty far on this side, and then taper it down. I'll cut it either with a circular saw, well, I should say with a jigsaw, give it a gentle curve. That way I can get a little more surface area over on this side. The shelf down here is going to run with a one half to one inch overhang and that's going to just go straight across. So now I get it started on that. Okay, I've got the lower set of boards put in. There's They're uh, two by eight by two by six alternating all the way across, notched out in the corners for the two by four vertical. And the theory was better than the reality. The problem again is this is just construction grade lumber. There's a lot of cupping going on. I don't have a belt sander or a planer to really level this out. So I've sanded it the best I can with my random orbital sander down there. And I'm just gonna power through. It is what it is. 
So you uh, learn from each experience and hopefully by the time it gets cleaned up, polyurethaned, it'll look a little nicer. Right now I'm just kind of slightly disappointed in the look of it. But uh, again, this is anything but fine furniture. So the next step will be to put the top set of, of, uh, of planks on. And again, I'm going to alternate uh, two by six and two by eight going across and it's going to get wider out here. And then I will be cutting a gentle curve with a uh, jigsaw after the boards have been attached. I've cut boards for the top surface of the table. And what I did was I started off narrow and got gradually wider. And then I freehand a design and I don't know if you can see the line, but it's right here. It's gonna be a gentle curve swooping down into that right there. So what I'm gonna do is refine that line, cut it out with a uh, jigsaw, saber saw, never know what that's called. Anyways, I'm going to cut that out and then get to sanding. Okay, I've got the shape cut out using a jigsaw and then I went along with my random orbital sander and did the best I could to level it out and I hit it with a 40 and then an 80 grit sandpaper. And this is what I was referring to about the dimensional lumber. Construction grade, you know, you know the old phrase, trying to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Well, I mean, Yvonne consoled me by saying, it's rustic. So I'll go with that. It's rustic. Anyways, I'm done for the day. And what I'm going to do tomorrow is probably hit it with a 150 and then start polyurethaning it. And then we'll get it into the solar shed and call it done. Anyways, that's it for today. We'll catch you tomorrow. I just got back from Brian and Pam's place, Midlife Prices. I borrowed Brian's uh, table saw and I ripped down some 2x4 into very thin strips. Those are about maybe an eighth of an inch thick. And what I'm going to do is, because of the flexibility that this affords, I should be able to make some banding to cover this end grain and hide some of the cupping that's the cupping that's disturbing me so much. You know, it's funny, the end grain itself doesn't bother me, but seeing the cupping and the unevenness, unevenness of it does. So uh, I cut a bunch of strips of varying thickness. Eighth of an inch seems to be the right one, offering the right flexibility to get around this curve here. And then I'll probably just have to laminate a couple of them together to uh, create the thickness and stability that I'm looking for. After multiple attempts of getting an edging to uh, work with this curve that I have here, and as you can see, it just breaking, not wanting to cooperate, I finally got smart and I took a piece of the wood, held it up there, bent the curve that the wood would make, had Yvonne draw the line, and now I'm gonna cut it with the uh, saw. So instead of trying to make the wood banding uh, adjust or adapt to the table. I'm going to adapt the table to the capabilities of that banding. So this is obviously obviously the way it was supposed to be done in the first place. Uh, it went on without a hitch. I just put glue. I'm using uh, Tight Bond 3 Ultimate Glue. It's an outdoor glue and being in the solar shed, it might be exposed to a little bit more of extreme temperatures, not moisture as much, but just temperatures. Anyways, so I put glue and then I use crown molding staples. I think they're two inches. And uh, I'm just gonna let this dry and I purposely left a nice lip here so that I can go back and sand that down so that it's flush with the surface of the table. Using a combination of sawdust and wood glue, I made a filler putty, filled the nail holes, as well as some of the small gaps around the banding. And now I'll come back with the uh, uh, sander and take care of that. Okay, I'll tell you, it's been a long day. Uh, I finally got the banding done, the sanding done, as many of the small little uh, brad holes filled as possible. And uh, so we get, get ready to apply the first coat of polyurethane. First coat of polyurethane has just been applied. 
and it soaks it up like a sponge but it will seal it and I'm gonna give this some time to dry overnight and then I will hit it with some sandpaper and then put a couple more coats on it does kind of give you the give you um, an indication of what the coloring is going to be like once it's dried. I mentioned ambering earlier, and you can see how it immediately takes the wood and gives it a golden look to it. I kind of like it in contrast with the Shoshugi Bond. That seems to be a recurring theme with everything I build. Anyways, I think that's going to be it. I did order some uh, levelers, some... Um, Leg levelers on Amazon. They should be should be here tomorrow. I noticed that it wasn't really sitting perfectly level and straight and without rocking in in the solar shed. So those should take care of it. Okay, we're skipping to the final product. Here we are. The table is installed in the shed, and this is the reason that it was uh, built, so that we could get our espresso machine and coffee grinder out of storage and drink some good coffee. Anyways, if you have any questions about the build, let me know. It turned out good. The levelers worked well. It uh, worked out to be just the right height. I guess... Uh, Hard to complain about anything. The lower shelf will hold a lot of other utensils. Right now we just have a little radio stuck down there. But anyways, if you have any questions about the build or anything else, let me know. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.